follow the uh, rotation. Okay, like what we have written, we'll follow the rotation of the object. Okay, rotation, we'll follow the rotation of the object. Okay, you yeah, follow. So we have our moment. Remember, we have a moment earlier. So I'm going to impose the moment. So we have a moment over here. Right. So if that's our moment, we also know where that you, I mean, I mean so the anger theta is going to rotate from the z axis. I repeat again, theta will rotate from the z axis and clockwise is positive. Okay. This has nothing to do with right hand rule, okay? How we draw it, because we have this orientation, we declare that clockwise is positive. So we know, we also are aware that this will break down, right? The moments into two components. So this is your MZ. And then another one. This is your MY, okay? Right? And then we have a relationship that we can form later on. Okay, so I'll come back to this diagram later that we have just drawn. So from here, if we look at equation two, all right, we look at equation two, we can, we can, if we were to rearrange them, we can have Y over Z, okay? Y over Z, is equal to my divided by mz, right? So my over mz, izz over iyy. Okay, we have this expression. And this expression is, I'm, I'm gonna call this expression as our equation number three, right? So we're gonna let tangent theta, right? Like what we have over here, we're going to let uh, tangent theta is equal to my over mz. And again, I'll elaborate down here, positive is going in a what? Clockwise direction, right? So we, we know this relationship from the figure. So we're going to substitute tangent theta into uh, equation three. And then from here, we know that y over z is equal to tangent theta multiplied by i z z over i y y. So this is our equation number four. Now, coming back to this figure again, okay, coming back uh, to this figure again, I'm going to sketch a line. I'm going to sketch a line. So this line, I'm trying to pick the right color. So I'm going to go for blue now. Okay, I'm, we're, I'm, we're going to sketch a line. Okay, so this line, has this orientation. I hope this is not pink. Okay, sorry, uh, peep, uh, sorry everyone. I'm partial colorblind, okay? That's why I cannot do chemistry. Right. So what I've just drawn, 
This is known as our neutral axis. And the neutral axis, the frame of reference again is from Z. And this I'm going to call pi. Okay. Again, I will elaborate pi is the orientation of the neutral axis. from the z-axis. So IE clockwise is again what? Positive. We are so used to, to anti-clockwise positive, anti-clockwise positive, isn't it? Right? So over here, if we pick a point over here, right? If we pick a point over here, we know that the point there will have gradient or uh, will have position and the position it will have, so this position it will have, so this is your Y, right? So this is your Y, and this position from here to here, this is your what? This is your Z, okay? So we can form another, another relationship with this diagram over here, where tangent pi, Tangent pi is equal to y over z. Okay. And again, I, I elaborate that positive is going in the clockwise direction. All right. So we're going to substitute. Okay, we're going to substitute. I'm going to carry on writing. So we're going to substitute tangent pi. into equation four. So what we have now is tangent pi is equal to tangent theta, right? I z z over I y y. Okay. And pi, what we see over here, so this is the final form. What we see over here is that pi is the what? Is the angular orientation orientation of the neutral axis. relative to the object uh, axis, okay, relative to, so object over here, so I'll call this, this is our object, okay, did we call it object earlier? Yeah, object axis, okay, now let's do one very, very quick example. Okay, I, I will be done in not more than five to ten minutes. Okay, I know you guys are exhausted listening to my voice. I get tired listening to my voice. Now, uh, let's look at another example. Okay, don't worry. It's not that bad. I know it looks really, really shitty. It has a lot of stuff, but don't worry. It's, that, it's straightforward. Okay, right. So now, this is the this is the question that we have. So uh, for this case, we want to find. So this is example number two. So I want to find. So the first thing, I mean, yeah, I'll I'll, I'll do 
first part now will continue again. So we're going to example number two is we're going to find you're going to find the orientation of the neutral axis. I do apologize. I went for the before I go on viewing from here. Anyone has any question? I do apologize. OK, I should have asked. Anyone has any questions based on what you see? Anyone, please. Uh, Eugene, the only uh, um, my one question is, you know, the the theta and the phi. Yeah. Why wouldn't it just be theta orientation for the neutral axis? Why did why is it? Um, because because the how the moment is acting is not necessary parallel to the neutral axis. Right, you're talking about these two angles, yes or no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So these two angles over here, right? Mm -hmm. So what, what I just said is the, the, the moment axis, right? The moment mm -hmm. axis is not e necessarily equal to the neutral axis. Does that make sense? Makes so sense. The, yeah, this moment over here is not necessarily acting uh, parallel or, or on the same orientation as your new axis. Good question, by the way. I never thought about that. OK, so my own like the thing is what I'm trying to say is like, is the moment causing the neutral axis to shift or? Yes, is it, okay. it's causing is the, the, the moment is causing it to shift and is also based on the second moment of area of the object. OK, OK, so that's how it is. It's, uh, it's, uh, moving right. So, uh, sorry, another thing. Yeah. Uh, yep. So would there be a situation where both the same? Possible, yes. Okay, makes sense. All okay, right. there's a possibility, yes, mm -hmm. and it can op it can it can only ha happen if it's a circle. <laughs> okay, makes sense. <laughs> okay, and maybe some some intricate shapes. Okay, it can happen like like eight sided pentagon, yeah, or eight sided sorry eight sided octagon. There's a possibility also. Okay, All right, thank you. Makes right. Sense. Right, so we're going to find the orientation of the new axis. Okay, so we know what we see now is we know that we have a i y prime, right? I y prime is equal to six point seven four inches to power four, and i z prime is equal to twenty one point four inches to four. Now, you can see that the y prime and z prime is taken such that it's somehow parallel or perpendicular to the structure. Yes or no? Right? So somehow, like this geometry over here is parallel to your y prime. This geometry over here is parallel to your z prime. Okay, you all can observe that, right? Now, that is why I say that the transformation or the axis is relative to the what? To the object. Okay, the axis is relative to the object. If it is relative to planet Earth, so let's say, OK, uh, I, I, I want to be stubborn. I'm not saying that you can't. You can. <laughs> I want to take my transform transformation axis that this is going to be my y. And then this is equal to my what? This is equal to my z axis. When you do that, what is the consequences, anyone? Your second moments of areas are going to be a mess. Yeah, well done. Your name, Jacob. Jacob, well done. Okay, when you do that, it's not impossible. Mathematically, you guys have done two ZZ or three or two ZZ or six, whatever. Your math is better than mine. I'll tell you that. Okay, but I'm going to get bloody headache on trying to find the second moment of area over here. Okay, so that is why when we prove the previous concept. What did I always mention, 
right? The axis always rotate with the object, okay? And it somehow is always, uh, somehow we are able to see that it's parallel to a certain aspect of your what? geometry, right? Like this is parallel, the axis 